Okay, in this video we're going to learn about rulers and guides. So at this point we're going to be learning how to draw all our basic shapes but with some level of accuracy. Um, as we're taking drawings from the CAD world we want to know that lines are meeting up and we're not just drawing arbitrarily on the, um, on the panel. So, the rulers, as uh, you've seen once before in a previous video, um, sit at the top um, of your page and on the left hand side of the page and they stay there if you zoom in and zoom out um, you get them up by going to view down to rulers and across to show rulers you can also turn them on by holding control and R to turn them on and off they do minimize the uh, amount of space you have to see the panel so you may wish to have them on and off at different times of course, before doing this, make sure that you're using the right units, and uh, then you'll see that uh, the units you've got are displayed at the top: 220 millimeters, 230, etc. Okay, for the moment, there's only one more thing I'll show you about the rulers, and that's how to switch between the artboard and the global ruler. This can be useful when you have uh, numerous artboards and you want to um, measure across both of them, or have individual rulers for each artboard. It's sitting right underneath the hide and show rulers um, option in the view menu in rulers and you just click on change to global rulers or change uh, to artboard rulers when that one is selected. Now we're going to learn about guides which are an extremely important part of the workflow and drawing accurate um, dimensions and laying out panels in Illustrator CS5 and you can get the guides by dragging off of the rulers. So if we go up to the ruler and we click down and hold down and pull down you'll see a dotted line that depicts the guide and we'll drop it at about 210 on our vertical ruler over there for the y-axis. And you can see the ruler, if I click off, is the, sorry, the constraint is generally th shown in a light aqua color. And if I zoom out a bit you can see that guide isn't part of the artboard, it in fact goes across the entire global space. And if I zoom in, it's a vector line, so it'll never gain larger than a pixel in appearance. We can edit and um, set accurate um, dimensions for these guides, if I click on it, and uh, it's highlighted in a darker blue. In the information bar at the top, the control bar, you can go to the X location, which uh, won't actually have a value because it's only a um, a horizontal bar. We'll say we'll go to the um, Y dimension and put 210 millimeters, which is where I want it to be, and it will snap to exactly 210 millimeters. You'll notice that the ruler, as we zoom out, also gains um, a scale uh, more appropriate to the uh, viewing size. So if I zoom in, it will show us uh, individual increments at a millimeter, or if I zoom out, it'll show us. Um, increments at um, every 50 millimeters. Again if I want to get rid of that constraint I can select it and delete it and I can create a number of constraints very easily by just dragging off the um, rulers. These are extremely useful for setting up your margins or setting up for example if I'll just draw a box by creating four constraints and we'll create a few more like this. Zones in which you want to uh, put particular artwork. And a part of using uh, constraints are the snapping tools, which uh, you'll be familiar with um, from uh, using CAD software if you have used it before, but if not, I'll introduce you to the concept now. It's uh, the, intellig the intelligent engine in Illustrator is recognizing an intersection, and you can see the smart, um, the smart guides, which are the next thing I'm going to teach you about, uh, written in green, insinuating as we um, letting us know as we hover above the intersection of the guides that we are um, about to snap to an intersection. Even though I might not be directly over it with a mouse, it will uh, fill in the gaps and acknowledge that we want to snap to that cross. So I'll just click and hold. I'm drawing a rectangle at the moment. And wait until the smart guide shows us the intersect sign again. I'll let go. And I'll zoom in. Ah, didn't work perfectly. So I will select the selection tool, grab the scale, wait for the intersect and we're done. If I zoom out you'll see 
or zoom in, you'll see that square has been perfectly generated. Right, that's a fire evacuation system in the background. I'm just going to keep on recording. Um, okay, now we, uh, you can see that the guards are in fact in the way of our, um, um, our board, um, the rectangle that we just drew, and you can solve that using layers and groups. But for the moment, I'm just going to show you how you can go and hide those guides, which is an important um, part of working in Illustrator. I'll hover over guides and we'll go to hide guides. You can see other options, lock guides, which uh, stops us being able to ed edit them in case you want those guides to um, um, not be dragged and dropped um, if you want to be dropping the geometry instead, um, such as the rectangle, or you can clear all the guides by get getting rid of them. I'll just click on the hide guides for the moment. And uh, oh, you can't see our um, rectangle because it doesn't have a stroke. I'll just select where the rectangle should be and you can see it's been selected. You'll learn more about strokes soon, but for the moment I'll just click on the stroke property in the control bar and give it a weight. Um, so one point. We'll learn all about that later. But you can see there's our rectangle. If I go back to view, guides, show guides, which is control and, um, um, and semicolon as the shortcut, it turns the guides on and off. Okay, now we're going to have a deeper look at smart guides and what they can really be used for. Um, once you get a hold of these things, they're um, pretty damn useful for drawing quickly and drawing accurately. Especially when you've set up your um, guides previously, off, um, dragging them off the ruler, um, and uh, particularly if you're using constraints along with the grid, which you'll learn about in the next video. Okay, so I've cleared those previous guides and we're going to draw some actual geometry for the louvers which we're going to be putting into um, a space just here. So I'll zoom in and you can zoom in as well I didn't show you before by pressing the Z key, not, not the Z key, the M key, sorry. No, it is the Z key. There you go. I just didn't have the window active. Um, and I'll click off onto the selection tool. This is the space we're going to draw in. I will get the rectangle box, which you can get by shortcut M. And I'm arbitrarily for the moment going to draw um, the box, which we could, um, and I'll give it a stroke. Not a, ooh, that's a fill. Well, we'll learn all about this later. Okay, there we go. So there's our initial louver. And for the sake of this argument, I'm going to say, um, I'm going to suggest that we want to do a slightly shorter louver, but with the same X and Y dimension. I'm sorry, the same um, height dimension and location um, from the top of the wall. So I'm going to get the rectangle tool again. Smart guides are on, and there's many ways to do this. Um, I could first start off by finding my location in the X plane on the X ruler, um, and then waiting for the green smart guide, if I move around a bit, to line up with the top left hand corner of the previous louver that I've drawn. You can see that it's done that there. And the vertical smart guide is picking up a whole bunch of geometries that don't matter on the um, from the lines above and below. But you can see that if I move it around I can start lining up with all sorts of um, different geometries that might be relevant to me. So I will click and hold down to drag this rectangle and you'll see the smart guides are still working for us. And I can draw it with exactly the same height and location on the Y plane just by using these smart guides. Extremely useful tool. I might just show you as well, I can draw a rectangle and a line or any geometry um, that's a basic shape just by clicking as well. If you click once it'll give you the option to assign a width and a height. So I'll set uh, 15 and a height of 4. Click OK and there's the rectangle, another useful way to use the shape tools.